Hello everyone, welcome to this updated video. I really hope you're doing amazing. Now in this video, I'm going to delve into quite a bit of details. I mean, it's been a while since I have done a very detailed video, uh, mostly because of a very busy schedule, so I kind of just have to summarize a lot in some of my recent videos. But thankfully, I have the time to actually go deep, as deep as I would like, into what is happening across the North Atlantic. So. Here we are looking at the satellite imagery and it is very, very active around Central America and even towards parts of the North Caribbean, Florida and the Bahamas. It is still very active in this region. And we still have that area highlighted in the southern gulf where we could see some development try to take place in the coming week additionally there is a tropical wave which is approaching the lesser antilles you can see all of that convection in association with it and there has been some dust moving in as well and more is going to move in as we're going to be heading into the new week as well so there's quite a bit coming for the next several days so let's get straight to it this is a look at the latest outlook from the national hurricane center and i'm expecting very soon probably by tonight or tomorrow a second area to be marked somewhere near the bahamas southeast united states because models have been hinting at something try to get itself together within that area we're going to look at the runs and the ensemble maps very shortly well not very shortly but later down in the video so we still have this area highlighted here where an area flow pressure is expected to form and thereafter it may try to get itself together but regardless there's going to be that significant rainfall threat persistent for central america over the coming days so there is a significant increase in rainfall and again that area 50 percent chance of formation so we'll see what happens with it although models are not really favoring uh, much such as a tropical storm maybe the most we can see is a tropical depression but that will all be dependent on how soon is it, uh, it is going to be moving into the states or around mexico thereabout how soon it will be moving inland once that area forms because if it has sufficient time over water and the environment is conducive enough then it may actually try to reach tropical cyclone status but we're going to talk more about it in a moment as we head to the caribbean here we can see in the western caribbean that there is a lot of activity for the Isles of San Andreas, Providencia, a lot of thunderstorms, a lot of heavy rain nearby, and even for sections of Central America, Southern Mexico, Belize, parts of Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, even down to Costa Rica and Panama, this area has been active and it will remain active as well. And there's also another tropical wave moving through and helping to enhance all of the activity that we're seeing. But for other areas such as the Cayman Islands, much isn't going on. Maybe a few passing showers at maximum today. And then for parts of the Bahamas, uh, Florida and Cuba, there's been some thunderstorms popping up today, even for a few spots in Jamaica. But for most of us, it's been a very hot Saturday. If you're out there, it is hot, no doubt. It is, you know, very important at this time to be hydrated as best as possible. Things definitely in the clear for the ABC Islands, much not going on. Few thunderstorms popping up across parts of Hispaniola, Puerto Rico. Let's go a bit further to the east. Here we can see uh, other parts of the Lesser Antilles, the Leeward Islands in particular, have likely experienced some showers today, maybe uh, near the vicinity of Antigua, Barbuda, uh, Montserrat, going to Guadeloupe, Dominica. There's probably been a few showers around. You can let me know in the comments what's been happening for you. But further south has been on the drier side through much of today. Now, rainfall forecast through the rest of today and into tomorrow as well. We can see all of these colorful shadings. And uh, based on the color, we know how much inches or how many inches of rain are expected by the euro for example as we head more to those shades of purples and those pinks are going up to two and a half three three and a half four inches of rain so as i said it's going to remain active in this area the flood threat is significantly there very high flood threat and that is a life-threatening situation because when we're talking about flooded roadways bridges that is the leading cause of fatalities within uh the event of you know tropical cyclones and it's not even a tropical cyclone isn't even needed we're seeing that right now just that significant increase in moisture it can help to fuel a lot of rainfall activity and then in those vulnerable areas a lot of flooding may take place so please stay safe if you're being affected by this guys again most of central america and that also includes the offshore islands of san andreas and providencia for northern south america it is going to be active as usual colombia through the guyanas then a few showers may move around uh, may move by parts of the abc islands going to the lesser antilles 
Uh, especially for some parts of southeast Trinidad, a few showers may move in, more, a bit more substantial rain, maybe not anything very significant though. Then as we head to the Northern Islands for a few spots in Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Cuba, already seen some thunderstorms popping up for today. But as we're going to be heading into tomorrow, we could see somewhat of a similar story. Not a whole lot of rainfall activity around though. Then things should be clearing up uh, for the Bahamas where there isn't a whole lot of rainfall around. Then headed to the vicinity of Hispaniola, going to Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands. There could be some additional downpours as we head uh, throughout the rest of today and toward uh, the end of tomorrow as well. Any point really between now and then, there could be some showers around. So there's definitely the rainfall chance. It may not be for everywhere, but some areas at least could experience some downpours. And so earlier this week, Florida was drenched with a lot of heavy rains, 20 plus inches of rain in some areas which resulted in widespread flooding. So that happened. And the Western Atlantic is only going to get more active. The hurricane season has just begun in the recent weeks and it will go on for the next couple of months. As it pertains to sea and development, I want to first bring your attention to this map, uh, the updated graphic from the Climate Prediction Center. And we have the different shadings and patterns to represent uh, what anomaly is expected, whether it be above average rain, below average rain, above or below average temperature, or the chance of development. We're heading to the week of the 19th to the 25th, which includes from around the middle of the coming week toward the early part of the following week. So we're focusing on that graphic here and we're looking at the Atlantic Basin. We can see the shadings of greens around. The darker the shading of green, the higher the probability of rain. And then we're seeing that red and white, uh, white striped area representing the probability of tropical development. And then that solid red area in the southern gulf that's the same area the national hurricane center has highlighted so it has a decent chance of actually producing something we could see development take place there as i said but i do not think it is a guarantee to say hey there's going to be a tropical storm uh we will have to see what happens with the system as we head into the next couple of days moving on to both the gfs and euro in regards to what they're showing now these maps are very uh there's a lot happening here we can see these green shadings even some spots of yellows oranges reds that is all representing the average precipitation rate now those black squiggly lines you see they're called isobars and they join areas of equal pressure they're imaginary lines so when we see them in a circular manner and they're tightly packed and the number that we see with an l gets lower and lower that means intensification and there we have the forecast time. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the GFS model is expecting. So we're seeing that around Central America going to be very active. And then we see all that moisture streaming up to parts of Texas. So the GFS is expecting that we're not going to see development in the Gulf this week, but we're definitely going to have that surge in moisture. While that's happening, let's go back a bit. There we have that next area that I mentioned. I told you guys at the start of the video that I think that an, uh, another area is going to be marked. This is the reason why we can see that as we're going to be heading into uh, deeper into the coming week, headed into the middle of the week, Wednesday, going to Thursday, Friday. This area is expected to develop and make its way towards the southeastern state. So we could see some development going on to the Euro model. Euro is also not expecting much development from that expected Gulf system. We just see that increase in moisture, which is all we need sometimes for there to be some significant flooding and damage to take place. We do see that airflow pressure form, but in terms of something really consolidating, Euro not expecting that. And it is also hinting at that next area that's going to be making its way towards the southeastern state. As we look at the ensemble map for both the GFS and Euro, starting out with Euro, we can see all these different strokes representing the different members. And the more of them we see, the higher the chance would actually be of us actually seeing something try to get itself together. So we're seeing that for the Western Gulf. And we're also seeing it for that trough expected to uh, try to get itself together as we head into next week. And then for the GFS, we're seeing a similar story here where the Western Gulf may remain active. And then we could see that next area try to get itself together on approach to the southeastern states. And it is really no surprise to see 
all of this moisture around, all this rain around in the month of June. It's really the Western Atlantic where we tend to see most systems develop because uh, the Saharan dust is usually in its very large quantities out there. June headed to July. July is usually the peak of those dust plumes that move in. And they do help to stabilize the environment and prevent thunderstorms from growing and intensifying much. So that is the advantage of the Saharan air layer, which is quite dominant out there right now. Hence, we're not seeing any disturbances from those tropical waves moving off of Africa and headed towards the west. But aside from that, sea surface temperatures are well above normal. Look at these very vibrant red shadings in parts of the northern Gulf. And near the Caribbean, we're looking at uh, the vicinity of the Eastern Islands going out to the tropical Atlantic. It is looking very warm. The Caribbean is also well above average in terms of the sea surface temperatures. As we look at the actual map here, 30 degrees Celsius, 31 in some spots, 29 degrees Celsius. That is definitely going to aid in development. And not only are the surface waters warm, but also uh, at a decent depth beneath the surface so should there be something and other environmental conditions are conducive it's just going to be taking up all that energy feeding into it and allowing it to rapidly intensify that's going to be a cause for concern as we head later down into the hurricane season but all in all we've got our first well our second area uh the previous one invest 90l is now off the map as that is not expected to develop into anything but uh, we do have that next area highlighted in the southern gulf which we want to keep an eye on as we head into this new week. And regardless of development, it could be a significant rainmaker for parts of Mexico and even for Texas. But Central America on a whole is going to remain active. There's an airflow pressure loitering there, and that is going to be enhancing the rain as we head throughout the next couple of days and throughout the upcoming week, really. In addition, we could see a trough try to get itself together and uh, try to take advantage of any favorable environmental conditions to become something on approach to the southeastern states and of course i'm here to keep you guys posted as per usual so that is it for this update i hope that you found it to be very informative i know it's been a pretty long video but i hope you found it to be informative however if you do have any additional questions feel free to leave them in the comments i'll get to you once i have the chance to do so and remember to always be weatherwise